What's up, Kel gang? All right, we're back with this physics problem here. Uh, okay, so we got a hot air balloon and it has all these masses basically. And it's saying it's barely able to lift this much mass, 300 or 3,300 extra newtons of uh, breakfast and passengers. And then its air density is outside. So it wants to find the air density in the balloon, right? So right off the bat, uh, we know that if the balloon is floating in the air, the density in the balloon has to be less than the density outside the balloon for it to float. If it was more dense, it'd just fall down. Uh, and if it was less dense, it might go up, it might not go down, depending on how much weight's in the basket. So let's go ahead and draw a force body diagram for what we got. So, of course, acting on everything, force of gravity. So the force of gravity is gonna encompass a lot of things. This is gonna encompass, you know, all of the weight, obviously, that they gave us. You know, this is the Newtons of the basket, the people, the, the breakfast, you know? So this is, you know, items. But it's also going to be the weight of the air inside of the balloon. This is something that is kind of tough to kind of wrap your head around. You're like, but the weight, but it, it's pulling up, right? Well, the buoyancy of the, the air in the balloon is pushing up because it's less dense than the air, but that still means it has mass and it's still pushing down with weight, right? So this is plus air. Uh, A-I-R, I cannot spell. Okay, but then also, like I mentioned earlier, there's the force of buoyancy pushing up. If this, if the air, uh, because the air in the balloon is gonna be lighter or less dense than the air outside the balloon, uh, there's gonna be a buoyancy force, and that buoyancy force has to be strong enough to outweigh all of this. Because we're saying it's barely strong enough, we're gonna say that you know, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, right? Because force is mass times acceleration. If it's not moving, that means that the sum of the forces is equal to zero, which is what we want, because it's saying it's barely able to hold, which means it's, it's gonna be at static equilibrium or whatever. All right, so let's write out what we know, right? So let's sum out our forces. So it's gonna be force buoyancy minus force of gravity, and that's gonna be equal to zero. So we can move this over, and let's talk about our forces of gravity. So we have force of gravity, uh, like of the items, plus the force of gravity of the air is equal to the force of buoyancy. So let's expand this out some more. Uh, so we're given all these masses, right? Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have, let me make sure I get all these, not the right paper. So it's 800 plus 1,800 plus 3,300. So that's all of the Newtons, basically. And then the force of gravity of air. So what do we have? We have the volume of, so it's volume, is equal to 2,700 meters cubed, right? And it gives us, um, what are we trying to find? So we, we, we're trying to, so, <laughs> what am I saying here? So it's gonna be mass times the volume. So we don't want mass, right? We don't have the mass. We don't, I mean, you know, cool, right? But, but like, what are we gonna do with that? So let's, let's, let's just write out the second part. So the buoyancy, force of buoyancy is density times gravity times volume. So we have volume, and we have the density of the air of the outside. This is the air outside. So all we have here is this mass unknown. And we don't, we don't want mass, right? We're trying to find the density of the air inside. So what we can say is we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. So what we can say is we don't want mass, we want density. So we can move this velocity over, and it'll be mass is equal to density times volume. So what we can do is we can move this into here and rearrange it. So all these numbers added together is, um, I think it's 5,900. Quick check on that. Yeah, that's probably about right. Plus, so it's gonna be density. And then we have its, uh, wait, why did I put a volume here? This is mass times gravity, of course. Hope you guys caught on that one. If you're this late to the course, you probably know what that is. Density times volume instead of mass times gravity is equal to density of the air outside times gravity times the volume. So let's just plug in our numbers, right? Uh, I guess we can rearrange this. Uh, so we're trying to find density of this. This density is the one we want. So density, if you rearrange it, you're gonna get, let's see, so it's gonna be density outside, which is, I guess, this, times gravity times volume. Uh, and then minus 5900 divided by volume gravity. So you plug in our numbers for this. Uh, so this is 1.23, right? I'm pretty sure is what it said. 
uh -huh, 1.23 times 9.81 times the volume 2700 minus 5900 and divide that by 2700 times 9.81 And then uh, get a number for that, and that density is going to be equal to 1.01. There you go, and that is less than the density outside, so we kind of proof for our answer there. I'm going to go ahead while I talk and try to, you know, plug this into my calculator, because I solved it a little differently today than I did last time. So, yeah, you guys can watch me solve 2, 3 times 9.81 times 2700 minus 5900, or 2700 times 9.81. Yes. Nice job, me. Forgot to write units too. This kilogram meter cubed. If you can read that. All right, so that's how you solve this problem. Basically, you just gotta gotta work things around, plug things in when you can, and uh, it's it, that's all that physics really is, right? You're just trying to plug things in that you know and figure out what you don't know using other equations. Um, so just the more you do it, the more you'll get the hang of it. So if you're if you're having some issues still, stick around for me because I make a lot of videos on this stuff. And yeah, so thanks for all the support, guys. I'll see you in the next video.